So in this video, I'm gonna tell you why I had to rush to the hospital. The life of Brandon, I was like... <sighs> I'm out of breath. So, I appreciate this is not a usual video of mine. This is not the standard Brandon where he goes out and enjoys himself with every single video. Just as I thought I was in the flow of a better stage, you know, putting more time into videos and just feeling good, a little bit better with YouTube. So, in this video, I'm going to tell you why, how I went to hospital, what I'm doing now. A lot of you will probably know what it is on Instagram, what I did, but I haven't updated you guys in a while and for YouTube, you probably don't even know. I'm probably going to answer some questions as well at the end of this video to keep some questions rolling because why not i guess this does give us a time to have this catch-up video because i feel like we don't get to have these that often and i'd appreciate it if you guys stayed till the end of the video i am sort of being forced to do this video mainly because i can't walk genuinely cannot walk i'm not trying to milk it i'm not trying to make anyone feel sorry for me so if there's any haters out of there <laughs> Whatever. I know the people that actually watch me will understand and I've had so many messages about it So thank you for that. But again, I'm doing this video because I have no I have no real option for this week because this is where I'm gonna tell you guys why I had to rush to the hospital I want to tell you a little bit about this game called Matchmasters. And now trust me, if you like games and you're competitive like me, then you're going to like this one. So essentially, Matchmasters is a really fun puzzle game where you can compete with people all around the world, or your friends of course, to try and get the best score. And there is also daily challenges and tournaments that you can take part in on the game. It's really fun and simple. All you have to do is match three of the same elements. But the best way to beat your opponent is by matching the blue stars. And if you can collect seven stars, it allows you to activate your booster, like this one on the screen here. They're really fun. They're just a cool way to get more points for your game. Also, Matchmasters Masters is also doing another thing that's really cool, which is going to be a giveaway for every week until the end of July with some insane prizes. I'm going to tell you what they are. A five-star holiday to Ibiza for two people, an iPhone 13, and an iPad Air. But again, you can have the chance to win them every single week until the end of July. And even better, this is like insane, right? Just by playing the game, you can have a chance of winning a car by the end of July. That's what they're going to be doing. Can I win the car? I want the car. All you have to do, guys, is download Matchmasters down below using my link in the description. Make sure you tap that. You are directly supporting me and Matchmasters by doing that. It will let you download the game, or you can and scan the QR code that's been on the screen and collect a hundred stars. The winners of the giveaways will also be announced on Matchmasters Instagram every single Thursday. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled on there to see if you've won. And yeah, thank you Matchmasters for sponsoring. Make sure you get involved, guys. Make sure you tap that link in the description. It's so easy to do. Back to the video. The life of Brandon, I was at a charity match on Saturday, a football charity match last Saturday. So from the day this is uploaded, eight days ago. It was good, like I was turning up, I was ready. I, I played in a few charity matches. Like I just enjoy playing them. Had Aaron Holly there, Roman came down and watched because it was like sort of near. So there's no point in me like dragging it out. Like the long, the long and short of it is I came on, I was actually I was marking hero. He was like left wing and I was right back. And oh my god, one, I've never struggled so much playing eleven aside. Like I'm so unfit now. I'm not the 16-year-old Brandon playing football. When I was 16, I used to be half fit and I used to be able to actually play football. Like now I'm, I'm just too unfit. I haven't got the legs to be able to play football. Anyway, I was marking hero left wing. We were like 4-0 or 4-1 down or something. And then I was on for about 10 minutes. This is all I got in the game. I'm facing the ball. Ball comes over. I go to control the ball on the turn, on the inside. So Ball's coming over, I've gone to go like that and spin and turn hero. Sort of didn't work. As I've gone to do that, my right foot, because obviously I'm right footed, I went to control and turn with, got planted in the ground. And as I've turned left, my foot has stayed in 3G pitch. And my upper body is obviously gone, because I was, I was ready, assuming my foot was going to follow with me. And my foot just stayed there. And then all I remember is about five clicks. I can't remember if they were pops or clicks. It sounded more like clicks, but my knee just went in. My knee almost went in on the turn, clicked like twice, and I fell back onto it on the outside, clicked like another three times. So I have got ligament damage. So that is why I'm sat here having to do this because I cannot walk. So anyway, I was on the floor obviously in agony. No, I, I, I tell a lie, I wasn't in agony. I was in a little bit of pain, but I was in more of shock. Like I was screaming at first. I was like, I genuinely thought I snapped my leg. Like I thought it had gone at the knee and they'd both gone like that way. Like I thought one had gone that way and one had gone that way. I was terrified. And I've never ever had a bad serious injury injury until this point. Really helpful physio guy came on, helped me out, tried to move my knee because it was just locked. Anyway, I came off the pitch, waited till half time. I felt so sick for like five, ten minutes. I, I don't, I can't really ever remember feeling like that before. Like I felt so sick. Like obviously it was probably the shock. It all came over me. Like I was sweating. Like I felt so ill in my stomach. I started getting like the rumbles. I thought 
thought I was going to puke. It wasn't a nice experience, let me tell you that. Rang an ambulance, um, they actually spoke to me on the phone, and we ended up sort of deciding not to do the ambulance route because it would have took a long time. And at this point, I wasn't really in much pain as such. I just couldn't move my knee. Bearing in mind, it was in a locked position. It wasn't straight. It was, I couldn't move it. Anyway, we ended up getting stretched off from the dugout, like the subs bit, all the way over to the, the outside of the ground. Aaron came and brought a car around. We got in the car, and we drove all the way back to our house. This was about 45 minutes. I made that decision. I could have gone to a hospital down the road, like Epsom, which was like 20 minutes away. But I didn't want to get stuck in A&E, which I don't know what the time was. It could have been two, could have been four or five hours. Then go back home. I'd rather just got home whilst it wasn't really hurting. I put my leg out straight in the car. Went back to the hospital, got in and out within A&E. Got in and out from door to door, like to the hospital, back to home within two hours. They checked me in, asked me what the problem was. Went and had an x-ray, then spoke with a doctor about the results. And they basically said it's minor ligament damage or mild to moderate. But they couldn't, I think he said the anterior cruciate, which is obviously ACL. I can't really remember what he said. However, they've given me bad boy crutches, which let me tell you, oh my God, some of you have probably had crutches before, but I've never used them. They ache my hands, like my palms from pushing on them and swinging. But anyway, because my knee was so swollen and stiff, they couldn't tell me to the full extent. They were like, it's, it's mild to moderate ligament damage. Like whilst he was looking at the x-rays, I was like, so is it snapped? Like, is it is it a real bad, like snapped ACL injury? And he was like, I can't, I can't like, tell you that. I sort of left with a little bit of confusion, so I'm currently waiting on an MRI scan I'm hopefully going to be able to get. I've had so many messages from you guys saying that x-rays didn't show much ligament damage on anyone's knee that you know, but MRI has picked up like completely different things. So I'm going to go get an MRI because it's nearly a week later, six days later, and I still can't straighten my knee, and I can't walk on it, I can't really put pressure on it. I can sit down on it, so right now, when I'm sitting down, it sort of feels normal, but if I try and put any weight on it standing, it doesn't like it. So the moral of the story is, I've done my leg. Accidents happen a lot on 3G pitches, and apparently, especially on Dawkins pitch, it's happened a lot this season with players. So it was a hot day as well, so like the surface was even more dry and sticky. And my boots just got caught, and my knee just completely twisted and clicked. I haven't really been taking many painkillers, if I'm honest, because I just don't feel like it's that painful until made painful. And this is why I'm making this video, because I feel like I don't tell you enough about my actual life, you know? This this is the current problem. You guys deserve to know. As much as I'd want to go out and film a normal video right now, I can't. I can't get up and walk and drive, so don't let it worry, because I'm going to be hopefully back walking. I mean, look, I can't even tell you. I'm waiting for physio as well and all sorts of updates on it. And it doesn't mean videos are going to stop anyway. There is other videos, obviously, I can do that don't involve me walking around on my leg the videos are going to stay like the quality where they are obviously just this week i've been resting and just trying to work out what this leg is doing for erin as well she's had to um basically be my carer for the last week i can get up and down the stairs i'm i'm every day i'm getting quicker at like learning new things and it's getting a bit better the positive way to look at it it could be a lot worse guys the best way i'm staying positive is as hard as it's been and it's been quite mentally annoying there's always a positive out of a negative and there's always something worse that it could have been so i just have to look at it like that and just look at the road to recovery and hope it heals as quick as possible. This is where I need you guys. Please comment down below if you know or have any experiences. I don't know, again, if it's a full snapped ACL, so don't scare me too much. But I don't know, any ideas that you've done to recover or ways that you found out your diagnostics of like what it was, like did you get an MRI? Whilst we're having a chat, I am going to answer a few questions because I've got a few from Instagram stories the other day that I want to answer that I might as well put in this video while we've got the chance to talk. So one of them is, did you see someone feel anxiety to help you? So yes, I do. I have this thing called hypnotherapy, which I do every now and then. So I'm currently in the middle of that. I have also got an appointment, funny enough, today where I'm going to see a throat specialist. However, I do recommend seeing a therapist or a counsellor. Now I'm still looking for things myself as well, but definitely see someone. Don't let it all in. Let it all in, don't keep it all in. But just know as well that it is normal to see someone and to speak to someone. Like it doesn't make you any less of a person if you want to if you have to have a counsellor or talk to anyone. Like that's that's a normal thing. Don't worry if you feel like embarrassed that you have to have one like or anything like that because at the end of the day it's to help you isn't it so does being around indie make you want to have a baby now it kind of does and it kind of doesn't when you see like a baby for like a day it's like it makes you think like oh yeah like they're so cute it sort of makes you do but then i feel like when you realize and look back at how demanding it will be maybe we should wait a little bit more I'm not saying indie's demanding i'm talking about any baby like just the lifestyle of having a kid however i know it definitely makes erin broody like i can they, we, she's already said it like there's obviously no hiding that we want a kid 
did. It's just when. Another one we have is how do you get back on track after losing motivation and feeling like giving up? I want you guys to know that even I feel like this quite a lot of the time. Like I have days where I feel so bad. My anxiety takes over and I just overthink everything. I'm Googling every problem with myself and I tell myself it's got to be this and then you, you just make yourself worse. And in general though, like, I don't know, if you're losing motivation with your job, like how do you get back up? Like you almost have to learn to teach your brain. You have to like make your brain strong and I'm still working on that. But like there's ways of doing it. Like I feel like emptying your bucket basically. This is one thing I've learned from my counselor. So like emptying your like stress level bucket can help so much more in the long run. So for example, if this bucket starts overfilling, you're just gonna make yourself more and more stressed and overwhelm yourself. So if you work on emptying all these things that you've got in a bucket that you either wanna do or that are stressing you out and feeding yourself more serotonin, so making yourself feel good and also emptying the stressful stuff. It's easy to say, I'm even working on it. But that's one thing that I feel like definitely works. When you lose motivation, there's little things like making a to-do list. I feel like stress comes into play a lot with feeling motivated. Work on stress levels because at the end of the day, I feel like personally, if you're less stressed, you're more willing to want to get up and do things because you're not sitting there thinking, oh, I've got this thing, but I don't know how to work it out. And I've got this. And there's always something in the back of your mind that you dread. And if you don't write it down or plan it out, it can just make you more stressed, lose less, lose more motivation. Tips for hay fever. Hay fever wipes. You can buy them probably in boots and stuff. There's like a yellow packet, but there is other ones. Wipe all your face. Nasal sprays. Obviously, you do your typical tablets, but I can't take tablets, so I'm useless. Eye drops. All of them things should help. <laughs> Are you planning on getting a new car? Definitely not now, because I can't drive. However, I am always looking at new cars. It's just a thing of mine. Like, I'm always... I just love cars. I'm always looking at cars. But I'm very, very happy with the car I've got. Like, I absolutely love it. So, yeah. That is going to round up today's video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. It's been a little bit of an update video. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for all the messages on Instagram and everything else. I hope you guys can understand, and I will see you with my next video next Sunday at 6pm. Peace.